Hi guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Trading R. Let's get you another corporate conversation now. Greenlam Industries is on our radar. The company posted a 12% rise in its revenue. But on the margin front, we have seen some softness on a year-over-year basis. Laminate volumes grew by 7%, while the veneer volumes declined sharply. So we'll talk more about all of this and also discuss the outlook going forward. We have Saurabh Mittal, who's MD and CEO of Greenlam Industries, who joins us now. Uh, Mr. Mittal, thanks a lot for joining us. This is Pavitra. And, you know, I want to begin by asking you about the revenues itself because we're done with nine months of the year and for that period we've seen revenues of around 20%. Um, I know you did give us a guidance earlier of 20 to 25%, but that's a little bit of a broad range. Uh, would you narrow it down for us? Where do you see it now for the full year? So I think nine months, as you are aware, we are at about 20% growth. Yeah. And so I think we should be closing at around 20% plus minus, you know, said here or there. So I think that should be where the year will close out in terms of uh, revenue growth uh, for financial 23. So this would be at the lower end of your guidance, right? Can you tell us if, uh, what kind of uh, demand situation you're seeing then? Is, has that sort of changed considerably from the beginning of the year? So quarter three uh, is typically slow too. Mm-hmm. And October, November was slow with uh, holidays and just generally building material demand was slow. But I think despite the demand situation, we did well. I think in in the last quarter, and uh, so I, I think the demand situation is, is nothing very exuberant or very low. Uh, so really, I think we have to continue to work towards gaining more market share, which we are doing. Uh, several of our export markets, which were under stress, have also to some extent normalized because they have those currency problems. So several of those markets have also come back to a certain normalcy, and we've had export also happening in Q3. So I think as we move ahead. You know, we should be able to achieve our planned numbers uh, in terms of revenue growth. Okay. And what about margins? Uh, you uh, had um, you have reported margins of 10.6%. That's nine months. Uh, by yeah. when you will get back to margins between 11.5% to 12.5%? Because face rates have come down, but generally other raw material prices still uh, very, uh, still on the higher levels. Uh, what is the uh, margin outlook here? Right. So in quarter three, gross margins have gone up. We've actually had a, about 48% plus gross margins. Uh, so on the EBITDA side, we've had a high expenses because the factory we bought in Gujarat has not come to a full production. We still had we had some additional costs because of that. We've had higher marketing costs in quarter three to sustain brand building exercises. We've also had some additional manpower costs because we're building teams for the new product launches, which will happen in the next financial year. So actually margins have improved if you see the gross margin gone to 48% plus. It's not showing up on the EBITDA. So as we move ahead, you know, raw material costs have normalized. They still fluctuate a bit. So it's it's not as if like uh, they've, they've gone very low, but it's more or less within a certain band. So I think as we move ahead, we should see improved margins. So what could the margins look like in Q4, the extent of quarter-on-quarter margin improvement? And also, if you could talk about the exports. You said certain export markets have opened up and things have improved. Which ones are those and what could your export revenues look like? So I can't give you like an exact number where the margins will, will go, but clearly with gross margins improving and if top line improves uh, you know, uh, more in Q4, they will see improved margins uh, in quarter four. As far as exports are concerned, we had markets of Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Egypt, some more African markets which had challenges of currency. They could open, you know, letter of credit. They could make payments on time. So I think that's all by and large behind us now, and they're normalizing to some extent. So those losses in those markets have been recouped, and that will probably bring more revenues for us, you know, going ahead. Okay, um, just one final question. I was mentioning earlier that, you know, the veneer volumes declined sharply. It was an over t- around 22% decline in the volumes. And this has been a loss making part of the business for a while now, right? So can you tell us what is the outlook? Do you expect this to turn profitable in the near future? So clearly we expect it to turn profitable. And uh, if you see the value, the value sales have gone up, but we've had some higher raw material costs. Uh, in the veneer business, we passed on increases to the market in Q3, mm-hmm. and that's you know, so that we have some challenges on the veneer business volume, while the flooring and door business have done better. So I think we just need, and the losses are not very significant. It just needs a little bit of improvement on the revenue side, and we could see you know margins coming in. So we are constantly working towards improving that part of the business too. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Mittal, thank you so much for joining us today and detailing those quarter three numbers for us. That's the word coming in from Green Lamp. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Trading R. Stay tuned. All the market action will come up next on Halftime Report.